This is Chuck Sachs for Indie Opera Podcast, and I'll be talking with Chris Emile, curator choreographer of For Research Only, and dancer assistant choreographer for James Dara's production of Philip Glass's opera Les Enfants Terribles, which are both being produced as part of Opera Omaha's One Festival 2019. Hello, Chris. Your piece for research only was the first performance I attended for this festival, and I, I found it to be a fascinating semi-immersive experience. When did you begin work on this piece? Uh, I've had the idea for about five years now, kind of about illuminating the performer's thoughts in a performance, Um, but James approached me about making this work about a year and a half ago. Yeah, so it's been in development since then. And what was really the inciting thought or, or incident that made you want to create this? Um, a lot of the work that I make is kind of trying to make uh, c- contemporary dance a bit more accessible. And when James kind of told me that the theme of the festival was deconstruction of opera, I just really resonated with that and just really wanted to give people kind of a behind the scenes look at what it takes to make a performance or any type of artwork um, and all of the kind of stress and like uh, trials and tribulations that go into creating something that you kind of only see the end product for. Now, there are moments or statements in the piece that are potentially uncomfortable for your performers. Uh, Were these specifically plotted ahead of time, or did they arise during the creation of the work? Um, Both. There were a lot that I took, you know, directly from the dancers. Some of the quotes that you saw projected were actual thoughts that the dancers wrote during rehearsals that I asked them to. uh, And, yeah, also some scenarios were uh, created that I wanted to uh, illuminate that I had experienced or had known that other people have experienced. I I imagine in the very uncomfortable moment when they said, um, put the black girl in front, her her ass will just sell money, sell tickets, Mm -hmm. and that kept being repeated. Did that happen to you? Um, That has not happened to me, but uh, I know a lot of the time people can get jobs or get places in life uh, based on the way that they look rather than, you know, their talent or artistry. So I kind of wanted to illuminate that because this character in the show, you know, direly wants to be at the top and wants to be seen, and she kind of gets there in the end, but not because of her work, but because of the way that she looks. Now, did you choose the Kaneko space, or was that what James offered you to work with? We looked at a few spaces, and Kaneko was kind of the one that most fit uh, in line with what I wanted to do. And also was in line with that was, did you originally believe you were going to have the audience uh, shift around from spaces during the piece? Yeah, we originally wanted to have no seating so that the audience would be standing and being uh, able to move around the whole time, but that wasn't really feasible. So yeah, we kind of went with the semi-immersive idea. So what did you hope, was your hope, that the audience would come out thinking or feeling about this piece? Uh, I hope that they would leave the piece feeling um, varied. We didn't really want to have one experience for each individual. We wanted, especially people who came together, to kind of have their own individual experience, be able to speak about it after, and kind of just be able to reflect on the fact that there is no one perspective that I think people can have when they watch performance. I think that all performance and all art in general is up for interpretation, so we just really wanted to emphasize that. Cool. Um, is, now, is this the completion of this work, or are you going to continue to develop it? Yeah, I would love to develop it further and show it um, in Los Angeles, where I'm based. Um, so yeah, I'm very thankful to the opera for letting me kind of give a first stab at it. And yeah, I like to keep going. Right. You, you've created your own home there. It's, it's uh, No One Art Home, is it? No One Art House. Yeah. Art House. Mm-hmm. And how's that going? It's going very well. Um, yeah, we're five years old, and yeah, we've gathered quite a following in LA, kind of performing in spaces like Kaneko and kind of unconventional spaces that you don't usually see concert dance. Uh, so it's kind of opened up the audience's eyes in LA to what dance can be and how it can be consumed. So in a sense, that you're doing a lot more site-specific and potentially immersive work. Is that what's happening? Yes.
Um, now, you're also here performing as a dancer and working as assistant choreographer Gustavo Ramirez Sansano in Les Enfants Terribles. How has that experience been for you? It's been great. I love working with Gustavo. Um, I used to dance in a company of his in Chicago, and that's also where we met James. Uh, so three years ago, we came to work with James on Simile. Um, and yeah, I've been kind of working on and off with James and Gustavo since then, and yeah, it's been really great. So Gustavo brought you into this project because he, he, you've already worked with him. Yes. Um, and But you're also a repetitor for him. So are you traveling the country and every teaching his work or do you only go where he is no it's mainly uh kind of like an la based thing like i've said his work at cal arts um and some other schools in los angeles uh but yeah he's a, he has a there were like nine of us in the company so there are a few of us that kind of rotate whenever he needs something now i i read it's uh growing up he started uh training with lula washington mm -hmm. That was Atlanta, was it? Or I'm no, not I'm in Los Angeles. In oh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, but also Debbie Allen, is she based out there too? She is, yeah. And what was that like? I mean, uh, I think De is Debbie Allen more uh, theater styled? Yeah, sure. Her background is also concert dance, but very heavily influenced by musical theater. Um, it was great, you know, both of those women are very um, adamant about learning every style and kind of. Uh, getting the most out of your training and being as versatile as you can, which has helped me a lot. And, and did you know that she was the famed teacher when you were working with Debbie Allen? I did, yeah. <laughs> that, that must have been fun. Yeah, she is very, uh, what's the word? She's very um, consistent in her work and her ethic, and still to this day, you know, she's directing, choreographing, producing. So yeah, it was very inspiring at a young age to see someone like that. And other than those two, who would you say is maybe your most major um, inspiration for your career as a dancer? Hmm. Uh, I would have to say Lula was definitely uh, paramount in my training because um, she didn't necessarily have the commercial fame like Debbie Allen has, but has still made quite a name for herself and has trained a lot of students in Los Angeles in the inner community and has made that kind of a staple for her pursuit in life so I really respect her and she still has a concert based dance company and she still makes political work about what's going on today so yeah Lula was very instrumental in my upbringing and now in uh, when I first saw um, Les Enfants Terribles I may have seen one of the original productions uh, with Susan Marshall directing and choreographing and they had more dancers there um, are the, is this still in this production doing the same thing as uh, the dancers are shadowing the lead characters or? Yeah, we are kind of echoes of the lead characters and kind of just uh, illuminating their feelings and moods throughout the show. So who are you echoing? Uh, every character. Ah. Uh, Elizabeth, um, sorry, I'm sorry, I can't remember the names right now. That's but yeah, we kind of represent every, all of them. Mm -hmm. All four of us, yeah. There's never really a moment where we each are mm -hmm. one single character. And you're interacting on stage with the, with the performers, the singers also, or are they, they're not in a pit? No, we're lifting them, moving along with them, dancing, catching them, yeah, all kinds of things. Yeah. Is that a first experience for you, in that kind of integration? No, um, this is my third, no, this is my fourth opera that I've worked on with James, the second one that I've assisted choreographed. So James really is a fan of dance, so he wants to implement dance as much as he can usually in shows that he's directing. So yeah, he, as much as we can get out of the opera singers to move, we usually do. Great. And um, in closing, what's next on your, uh, your schedule? Uh, my performance group in LA, No One Art House, has a performance uh, through a festival at Grand Park, which is a very big park in downtown LA, and it's called Our LA Voices, and it's kind of giving light to uh, local dance and like art organizations within LA, so we're performing for that in late April, and then in early May, we're performing at Form Marco Santi, which is a music festival in Arizona, so yeah, that's what's next. That'll be nice in May. Well Thank you. It's been lovely talking with you, and I look forward. I'm going to see the show tomorrow night. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a great day.